Hello, how are you? Uh, happy um, Wednesday, I guess. Uh, is it? Yeah, happy Wednesday. Let's do some exercise. Um, which one? Uh, upside down push up, I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. <coughs> Alright. Ah. <sighs> ah. Okay. And then some pull ups. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. Oh. <sighs> okay, that's good. Oh boy. <sighs> wow. So how long do you take? Ah, uh, about three minutes. All right, we'll take five minutes break. Wow, good exercise. Oh. Oh. Wow.
Okay, give me back two more minutes, please. I gotta. I'll be right back.
Okay, happy Wednesday, everybody. Let me get some water. Yeah, I will tell you some interesting story, very interesting story. You know, I went to Madison, Wisconsin for my undergrad. It took me seven years to graduate because my English was so poor. So I decided to, well, I applied to Madison, Wisconsin from South South Korea after I 
a graduate, I mean, in my 12th grade when I was in high school. So, and medicine was kind of, I got accepted. So, I, but originally I was made, want to major electrical engineering, but later I switched over to computer science because and electrical engineering requires too much calculus, like differential equation and whatnot. And engineering, mathematics, I, I did not want that route. Too much mathematics, right? Too much calculus. So, this I major in computer science, all right? Computer science, I mean, you don't have to take differential equation, okay? All you gotta do is take three semesters of calculus, and first and second semester calculus, I just pass by exam, because those are well already learned in high, Korean high school, okay? So, yeah, yeah. So, I just took one third semester calculus, and one Ad more advanced calculus like Lagrangian multiplier, blah blah blah. Okay, but so I majored in computer science and then I took acting class and video production class and backstage craft and um, uh, theatrical literature class. Okay, like kind of screenplay, history of screenplays, stuff like that. Okay, so. Those are only four acting, I mean, entertainment business related classes I took when I was in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. So instructors, uh, we have TAs, some, uh, depending on the classes, if class is very big, then yeah, big lecture hall, professor is the lecturer, and then we have individual discussion section, right? There we have teaching assistant, but some other classes, including video production and acting classes, our instructors were actually teaching assistants, like graduate students in the department of drama and theater. Okay, so and um, yeah, so sometimes that graduate students were instructors, even in computer science during the summer class, where most professors go out on a vacation, uh, some. Computer science classes were taught by graduate students, PhD candidates. Okay, so so I was watching a very famous movie, and then well, I'm not gonna tell you which one. Uh, and then it's it's pretty much household movie back in the days, like 1980s Hollywood. Yeah, it's a classic movie. So. And I look at this actor, quite a significant role in that movie. <laughs> then I was like, that gentleman actor in a movie, famous movie, that gentleman kind of looked like my act acting instructor back then in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, so, so I looked up that movie and then found the name of that actor. And then I did some Google search. And uh, that gentleman is a professor in uh, like theater and drama in some another university. Okay, so and so I looked at his uh, resume in his uh, website, professor website, and the time matched. Okay, so he was in Madison, Wisconsin, as a graduate student when I was there. So he was him. So I emailed him. Okay. Yeah, professors typically have their email address in their school website, right? Oh, hello, Professor Ed. I'm not sure if you remember me, but back in the days, like, long time ago, yeah, I, I was a student. <laughs> I was so surprised that I, because when he was our instructor acting class, Madison, Wisconsin, all I knew, all we knew is that he used to work as an actor in Los Angeles, California back in the days. That's, he didn't brag about it. That's all we knew. Okay. I didn't know he was in that movie. It was, it was a very famous movie. And uh, his role was quite a significant role. Okay. I, I didn't know. Okay. Until a couple of days ago. Okay. So yeah, I, I emailed him and then he emailed me back. Oh wow, he was he was him. Okay, I I I had no idea. It's good. 
kind of class reunion, not exactly, but because he's professor, I'm student, kind of, I, I mean, he was graduate student, I was undergrad, now he's professor, me, just regular guy. But yeah, it's great reunion of friends. Yeah, it, that was interesting, okay, so, yeah, yeah. So I emailed him like, hey, I actually, after I graduated from computer science, I actually made a movie and actually I tried to be an actor myself in Los Angeles for a while, a long time ago. I did email him the story and also sent him the link in the, you know, Therapy for Metrophobia, the movie I made all by myself in YouTube, right? Yeah, so I sent him the link. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so if he watches, hopefully he likes it. Okay, so. Well, professors are busy, so, yeah. Because I, I thought he might be in interested, okay, because in that movie that I made, I was acting, okay, so probably he was he could kind of see his acting influence. He, he was very charismatic kind of acting teacher, okay, so, yeah, uh, he, yeah he, he's very well known in that department and he became a professor later on in some other university because he got some charismatic <sighs> pedagogical method of teaching acting okay great great teacher of acting so yeah yeah i was very happy for him he became a professor okay so yeah it's yeah. great yeah so that was cool We'll take five minutes break, okay? And then, the, yeah, the copiomology, we'll start looking at that again, right? Yeah. Or oh, maybe we'll talk about something else, okay? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, before we get back to the human analysis thingy, uh, let's talk about Hollywood, right? Some of the experience I had, I mean, I didn't go very far. <laughs> yeah, I, I met some famous, I mean, I've seen, I've seen some Hollywood celebrities that was year 2006. I was in LA 2006 to 2009, so three years. I made like three, I mean, I've seen three Hollywood celebrities. Uh, I think I've seen Lindsay Lohan. I think she was driving her car behind me, my car, you know, 
Highway 101 Highway. I think it was Lindsay Lohan. Okay, so I just look at the rear view mirror. It was traffic jam, right? It may not have been Lindsay Lohan, but I, I think it was her. Okay, because because I look, it was white Mercedes Benz that she was driving. Okay, so I look her name, Lindsay Lohan, what kind of car she drives, and uh, back then. Some website said, yeah, she has white Mercedes, okay. So I, I think it was her, okay. So I look at the rear view mirror and she looked very professional, very, very professional, okay, very serious, okay. Oh, she was cool. And also, I think it was like Hollywood, Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood Boulevard, whatever, okay, at night, in the evening. I watched, I, I saw Bill Maher. The talk show host, Bill Ma, short guy. He looked cool. Yeah. He was getting out of his fancy car. <laughs> I guess it was like black limousine or something. And going to some fancy dance club. That's kind of exclusive dance club. I, I, I didn't get it. Of course. I, I just walk, was walking by. It wasn't that kind of dance club that people like me could go. <laughs> A fancy one. I've never been to a very fancy one in Los Angeles. I've been to some kind of middle classy dance clubs, which is nice, <clears throat> but not, not some fancy ones. Why? Because they're exclusive. Okay, so but I saw him going to going there. Okay. Another one. Third one. Okay. Those are the only three Hollywood celebrities I think I saw on the street was well, somewhere else. Uh, it was, I was a computer programmer, right? So we had group lunch paid by our bosses, okay? In a nice shopping mall, all right? In Los Angeles, California. It's not, so yeah, it was, there was that, we went to a restaurant. I, I, I'm not sure what kind of restaurant there was. Could it have been Chinese or Mongolian or Japanese? I don't think it was Korean though, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Maybe it was, I don't think it was Korean. Because if it was, I would remember. So yeah, we had our lunch, okay, we were going back. Okay, we were waiting for elevator. And so elevator came down, the door opened, and there was Dustin, Mr. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> getting out of elevator with a lady. Middle-aged lady, okay. I think their their relationship is more like business friends. Okay, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. And he he looked at me. We had some eye contact very briefly. Okay. I was like, wow, would this cool, right? So, yeah. So brief eye contact. Okay. So cool guy. Oh, it's a little bit scary though. Okay. So. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, man. Okay. Oh, wow. That was an interesting experience. Yeah. Oh, man. That was cool. All right. But, yeah, ha having an ex acting instructor who, who had a major role in a household name kind of movie as an acting instructor, yeah, there's some cool experience, but I didn't know, nobody knew, we didn't know if, that he was in that movie, in that role, because that's a very famous movie, okay, I'm not gonna tell you which one, okay, but for privacy reasons, but uh, that was like, how many years ago, that was like, almost like 20 years ago, okay, so, a couple of days ago, I realized, yeah, it was him, okay, so, I, I guess he's a very humble guy, Okay, so he didn't want to brag about it, right? So all these two decades, I didn't know. Okay, yeah, that's interesting, cool story, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I learned acting very well. Okay, perhaps I'm not a very good actor. Well, if I'm not, my fault. Okay, but I had very good. We had very good acting instructor. So yeah, back in the days. Okay. What else? So yesterday I was watching a movie. Um, 
Mr. Zankolo Van Damme, the quest is quite, it was quite pricey. It was like $15, Amazon Prime, okay. But I think it was worthwhile to buy it. Renting is like $5, right? Yeah, but I bought it because I might watch it again, so the quest. The movie The Quest is a kind of B movie. It's not top A class movie. It's not first class movie. It's that kind of second class movie. But the cinematography was very well done. But the part I didn't like, I did not like, is the music, background music. Okay, beginning part of the movie. It was too cheap, too corny. Okay, so and that movie was directed by Mr. None other than Chan Claude Van Damme. And he did a fantastic job, I think. I think he did a great job. Okay. His directorial debut. It's just that the music, well, it, music improved toward the end of the movie. Okay. But in the beginning, it wasn't very good. And also the guest star, Roger Moore, 007. Okay. It's very nice of him to show himself in this. Mr. Jan Claude Van Damme's movie, kind of second class movie. Even Mr. Charlton Heston, the American Moses, the Ten Commandments, and also NRI, National Rifles of Association Chairman, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, he was also in one of Jan Claude Van Damme's movie, B movie, second class, direct to video. Uh, that movie's name, The Order. It kind of has some religious theme in there. Okay. Uh, that movie, I started watching it, but I didn't quite finish. I mean, so. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chato has to, you know, giving some encouragement to this actor, Mr. Chan Claude Van Damme, I think. Okay, so giving some love. Hey, Roger Moore, Chato and Heston, they, they are like very legendary figures, right? Yeah. All are bigger than Chan Claude Van Damme, so, right? Yeah, let me put some layer on this. Cut chili. <sighs> so, when I was a teenager or child in South South Korea in 1980s, 1990s, I could kind of tell whether this movie is going to be good or not by the film quality. Okay, some movies in 1980s, 1990s have very bright and very colorful film quality. Okay, back then I was like teenagers, so I didn't know anything about filmmaking. But just by looking at the difference in the on the screen, the color level or brightness. I kind of tell, predict this movie is going to be good or not, because by the pattern, okay? So, good quality movies in 1980s, 1990s, it tend to be have a bright color setting and very colorful colors, meaning, by now I know, they used high quality films. You know, the plastic film, we do this silver dioxide or something, okay? Yeah, they, they are different grades, different quality of films, you know. So, big budget movie making more, I mean, investment of more money. So, high quality films, that means it's a big budget project, big budget film. So, it will come with better quality actors, writers, directors, casting directors, background music composers, right? So, yeah. That kind of makes sense. So, when I was in Los Angeles, California, I had many acting friends, and some were acting friends of mine who tell me, yeah, I wrote this short screenplay, and I showed it to somebody who's well-connected. Later on, I saw a movie based on my screenplay. So that guy stole it from me. And I believe that because I kind of have similar experience. Okay. 
So I submitted this movie, Therapy for Metaphobia, to Sundance Film Festival, among others. Okay? And they all rejected my movie. Okay, I mean, big film festivals. Five film festivals who accepted my movie are smaller ones, okay? Small ones, like local, okay? But big, like international level, they all rejected my movie. But later on, I could kind of see, because those big film festival people, they're very well connected people, right? Later on, about a year later, right, I could kind of see, yeah, they tried to imitate my movie. Okay, so that my speculation. And when it comes to writing, right? Like earlier this year, I would, when I was in Campaign Trail, I wrote a lot of essays to national level newspapers, national level online magazines, right? They all rejected mine, my essays. But later on, some of those big national level magazines, like online, I could kind of see they try to imitate my ideas and my approaches, okay? That happens, okay? This, they, they still, right? They still from the essays or screenplays, movies, that they rejected. Okay, that happens. Also, A movies, top class A movies, many times they imitate from B movies, boom, B movies like lower grade movies. I see that a lot. Because I watch both A movies and B movies. Like class first class movies and second class movies, okay? Because in Amazon Prime, second class movies are free. Many of them. Okay? So Yeah, I could see some later first class movies imitated from second class movies. Because some second class movies have very good ideas, okay? Although there's very low budget movies, okay, so And we'll take five minutes break, okay? And let's do some acting, shall we? Yeah, I saw nothing big, something fun. Okay. We'll take five minutes, I guess. Ah. <coughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah, let me get drinks ready and It'll take like five minutes. Oh okay. uh.
Let's give it a title. Some short skit, short film, short gig. Ti let's give it a title. How about me or money? <laughs> very corny, over the top. Very, uh, dirt cheap. <laughs> Very, very childish kind of <coughs> title over the top. Me or money, okay, okay. Action. Hey, I want to date you. Yeah, you? Oh, you know what? Yeah, I made it in Hollywood. Now I'm becoming, have become very famous. I'm a star, movie star. So, um, but back in the days when I was struggling, when I was penniless, ladies didn't think much of me. Ladies like you who are very attractive. And back when I was, not famous when I was not wealthy, but now that I'm a millionaire in Hollywood, I get more female attention. But I'm the same old guy. I I'm the exact same guy as like 10 years ago when I was a star of actor. Okay. It's just that I'm more famous and I'm a millionaire now, but back then I was penny pincher, pathetic penny pincher. But I'm the same old me, so my guess, you don't want me, you want my money. See him. <laughs> cut, cut. So that's that. But yeah, that's just, I was just playing on this female stereotype, like gold digger. But that kind of stereotype, even females take advantage of that, you know, comedy. Like Miss Milana Weintrup and her friend. Yeah, the, let's talk about something more interesting that YouTube video series. They also poke fun of, as females, they poke fun of that kind of female stereotype. They were playing those stereotypes in some of their episodes, okay, so. <laughs> but females, they are not like, really like that. I mean, when I was in those days in California, okay. I mean, obviously I was poor, but I've met some beautiful, attractive ladies in those days in California. I mean, I've met them. They did not give me impression of being you know, a gold dealer, okay? And now it's us in Los Angeles, Hollywood, California, some other parts of the world, like in Korea and America. I mean, in America, yeah, I, I did date back in the days, and I was not rich. I was not famous. But some, there are some kind and generous ladies who still give chance to these guys who are not wealthy, who are not famous, to give them a chance to go out on a date. Okay, so I'm very grateful to kind and generous ladies. So yeah, ladies, they are not like all like that. You know. It's, it's just joke, stereotype it's joke, yes. So that's that. What else? Well, hey, it's beginning of the long, another long weekend, right? I'm not sure if I'm going to travel tomorrow. Today is Wednesday. It's the beginning of the long end of the year weekend. So will I travel tomorrow or not? That I haven't decided yet. Tomorrow being a New Year's Eve, right? Thursday, Friday, New Year's Day, Saturday, Sunday. Whew. 
Du skal ikke trappe og... Ej, det er sjovt. Do I want to travel? I'm not even sure if I want to travel tomorrow or not. I'm just blank. But if I travel, yeah, I will go to Kenai because they're a beautiful sandy beach, okay, and I love running along the sandy beach with this sound of this and scenery of this wave, ocean wave, and so horizontal, right? And the smell of this salty water, right? Yeah, I love it. But to get there, it's like five hours drive. And that's kind of five to seven hours of driving. And by now, I've been to Kinai many times, so... I'm not sure. Yeah. Let me slip on it, okay? <laughs> Let me slip on it. Should I go to travel or not? It's a long weekend, but I'm not going to make any hotel reservation, okay? Why? Uh, because there are many hotels there, so I know I can get a room there without making a reservation, okay? Because Kinai is very busy place during the summer, during the salmon fishing season, during the winter, uh, not very busy, okay? So... Because during the winter, busy area in Alaska are ski, are ski resorts. Like they go snowboarding, skiing, okay? But in Kenai, it's in the ocean, so there's no ski resort there, okay? So, yeah. And also, depending on the road condition, I might turn back or stay in some another town. Okay, I might, not, even if I start driving tomorrow to Kinai, Kinai, I may not get there tomorrow. I may have to stay overnight in some other town or even decide to come, drive back. It all depends on the road condition because it's in the winter. And it's like seven hours drive in Alaska. So there are, most areas have, don't have any cell phone reception. And road condition could be very icy or snowy. Okay. Yeah. And also every now and then there are car accidents too. Okay, so if that's the case, or what if there's avalanche that's blocking the road, then I have to turn back, right? Yeah, so. It, it makes sense to not make any hotel reservation, okay, because I know in Kenai, during the winter, yeah, they have rooms, okay, so, yeah. Okay. I slip on it, okay, I'm not sure if I should travel or not, I'm not sure. Well, right, we'll take five minutes break, okay, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about human analogy, okay, because... Uh, we got something, right? The copium shield and copium spear, right? Yeah. There was a big breakthrough, okay? Because it explains so many different things. So that's the power of copium allergy, okay? Once we define what copium is, which is a very general definition, like anything and everything that has quantity and quality, <laughs> okay, then 
you can come up with some laws and equations that apply to anything with quantity and quality, like money, time, space, energy, you name it. Yeah, this metaphysics of copiomology, okay. So I might stay here. Why? Because we got we got to discover something big, right? So over a long weekend, I may just stay here and continue exploring this kind of brand new chapter in copiomology, right? I think that's important, right? Because come next week, yeah, I will have to start writing. Right, but if I go vacation, all I'll be doing is just watching television. That's typically what I do. I mean, I go out there and show, see shore and run, but go to Walmart, buy food, come back to my motel, and microwave the food and watch television. Hmm. Okay. Been there, done that. So, uh, it's kind of critical period for us in terms of human allergies. So, I might just stay here okay? and continue to explore this brand new chapter of copium allergy. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good plan. Makes sense. All right. We'll take five minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Human analogy, huh? Okay. Well, th that's what we do here sometimes, not always. But here we do everything, right? We do mathematics sometimes, physics, biology, linguistics, right? History. Philosophy, we do everything here. So, martial arts, dancing, singing. We're dancing not too much because we don't have any music.
Ah, uh, boy. We, we do like stretching, weightlifting, we do everything here, okay? So, yeah. we talk about some stories, imaginations, dream, right? Yeah. We do everything here, so. Every now and then we do human analogy, right? So. Yeah, we do talk about politics, ideologies, and whatever, right? We, do, we talk about anything, everything. So, religion, right? Okay, so, it's actually, it's not always this, okay? It goes both ways, thinking about it. Insulator, okay? It's like, Two soldiers, I mean, two uh, knights in the Western society, they have shield and sword, right? Back in the days. Yeah, you look at Ben Hall, Mr. Char Charlton Heston, like Ben Hall, all those movies, Middle Eastern, Western. Yeah, they have shield and sometimes spear, spear or uh, sword, right? Okay, two knights, okay? Let's say this is sword, okay? Shield, insulator, sword, to poke a hole in, on this insulator. Because during the summer, what we want is coldness. Past copium, negative copium, hard and cold during the summer. We want something cold, air conditioner, ice, refrigerator, fridge, freezer, right? Positive copium, negative copium. We want to get rid of hotness, right? During the winter, it's the opposite. It's too cold. So negative copium, positive copium, okay? This is more valuable, something hot, heater, right? Yeah. So it is all relative, depending on the season, right? During the summer, everywhere is hot, so we want something cool. Shade, sunglasses, umbrella, this beach parasol, right? And we take off our clothes, have a t-shirt, right? To get rid of all this hot heat. That's in the summer. During the winter, yeah, extra clothing to insulate our body temperature, and we turn on the heater, right? Yeah. So in Alaska, Alaska natives, uh, in Arctic region, right? Yeah, they catch fish, and they smoke it in order to prevent rotting. They dry it and smoke it. Fish, right? Salmon. And during the winter, they can just put it outside. Yeah, natural refrigerator, right? Mr. Haimo, he's not Alaska native, he's a Caucasian gentleman. But uh, his uh, Alaska outback is Bundak Saint, Homesteader, right? He just hangs the salmon outside during the winter, right? Good fish with these eggs, right? So he used this hacksaw to cut this frozen big fat Alaska salmon like this thick with this salmon egg and, and he made this salmon steak. Ooh. Wonderful, right? Sometimes he just hang hang this booze outside during the winter. Natural refrigerator. Moose steak, right? Yeah. Good meat. I'm sure bear bear steak tastes good too. Because some Alaskan hunters they told me they say it's really good. I believe it. Bear steak. Oh. 
And I watched some YouTube clips by some hunters. They were grilling green onions on bare fat. And they say it tastes really good, bare fat. I believe it. Yeah, I'm sure it tastes really good, bare fat. Oh, positive. You know, this cup is kind of sticky. Let me wash it. Kind of sticky outside, so. Yeah, I'm very sensitive about this tactile sensation. This I don't, I really don't like it when it's sticky. Okay, so that's why I wash my hands like ten thousand times a day with some exaggeration. How many times do I wash my hands a day? Twenty, thirty times, I guess. Yeah. I, that's why I never use soap. How many times do I wash my face a day? I guess about ten times. Okay, that's why I don't use my soap. Okay. I use soap, bar soap, only when I wash my whole body, um, lathe, later. Not the entire body though. Just when I take a bath, okay. Why am I talking about bath? So unnecessary. Huh. Okay. So when this cold body wants some heat, it tries to pierce, poke a hole on this insulator to get this heat, transfer heat to this cold body. When this hot body wants some coldness, what it want is to poke a hole in this insulator of this cold body to get in the coldness. So hotness, coldness is all relative. Okay? Relative temperature. Right? Just gravitation or electric potential or gravitational potential okay i mean some countries like netherlands is below the sea level right some higher country like mongolia or nepal the himalaya region right some people live some countries are higher level some countries are lower level it does not matter the only thing that matters is relative height from they drop the ball, it lands on the ground. Drop the ball, lands on the ground. Same thing. Okay, it, 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 the only thing that matters is relative differential height, differential uh, relative um, altitude. All right. Yeah. So it's all relative. Okay. Copium yeah. relativistic copium potential. Yeah. yeah, copium, yeah, it can mean potential energy is height, right? Or it could be in, uh, copium potential, the difference between height, the different relative difference between like temperature or money or power or social status. Or fame. Who's more famous out of two people? The whole spectrum, right? But the only thing that matters is the difference between two people's fame or money level, social status level. Okay. That's why this copiumology is so generic. 
And that's, that's what makes this copy analysis so powerful because it's everywhere. Once we define copy arm as something, anything with quantity and quality, and if we come up with some kind of law or equation about this copium, copium allergy, it can apply to everything. So it's kind of a theory of everything. Okay? Yeah. The holy grail of scientific philosophy, right? Yeah, we got it. It's copium allergy. Okay. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing the history in the making. Okay. One day, in my opinion, in my prediction, this, this will be very famous. At least it's supposed to be. Whether it's going to happen or not, that I cannot tell you. Why? Because I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I'm not God's messenger. I hope I am. Maybe I am. I don't know. But there's a good chance that I'm not. Uh? <laughs> I don't know. I would love to be. It depends whether this become famous or not. It may happen during my lifetime, or posthumously, or it may never happen. To me, it does not matter at all. Why? We are having fun making it happen. We are having fun not making it happen, but we are having fun at least constructing or discovering this theory. I'm avoiding the term creation because in human knowledge Christianity, only God creates. We are just messengers or discoverers or gold miners. Yeah, gold diggers. Gold miners. Okay, the... Let's take five minutes break, okay, so... Yeah, good stuff, all right? Yeah. Grab myself and take a picture of this. Okay. So, well, in interpersonal level, like, yeah, you can think about the macro level, like sociology, or micro level, like psychology. We don't like the name psychology, though, okay? But, well, that's just, it is how it is now. It may change. My recommendation, they should rename their department to Department of Humanology, not Psychology, okay? Because Psychology, I don't like the name, okay? So, <laughs> whatever. But, yeah, psychologists, they are welcome here. By all means, let them study this. Uh, 
I encourage them to. Okay, so, so that they can do better job. I, I mean, they they are doing fine job, I think, but they can do better. Okay, so I mean, come on, we <laughs> discovered Einsteinian special general relativity were wrong, all right. So yeah, we encourage physicists to come here and learn from us so that they do better job in physics, okay? <laughs> Mathematicians? Well, my mathematics isn't that good, okay? So that's... But I guess they can get some ins fresh inspiration from us sometimes. Yeah, everybody's welcome, you know? So, okay, macro level, yeah, this could, this could be border wall, all right? Yeah. Poorer country, wealthier country, yeah, border wall, okay? And this border wall is breached, like, the, the castle of Jericho, right? Joshua, Israelites, getting into the castle of Canaanites. Across the Jordan River, right? Yeah. Bridge of Castle's Wall. The land of milk and honey. Wealthy. Fertile land. So then Israelites were invaders of this innocent country. Okay. That's one way to look at it. I mean, Bible is written by Jews, so in their perspective, yeah, God, Jehovah is with us. It's our right to invade that country, but from the perspective of Canaanites, they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't deserve to die. They were just living peacefully. But Israelites were invaders. They came and they st stole, even coming murders. They just came from Egypt, <laughs> led by Moses, okay? Yeah, so, I mean, personally, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a Jew, all right? I love Jewish tradition, okay? I love Bible, okay? But at the same time, we don't have to confine ourselves along the line of thinking, attitude of Jews or Christians. We don't have to, okay? We can, we are also scientists here. So, historians as well, we want to be as objective as possible. So, from Canaanites' perspective, Jews, Israelites, led by Joshua, they were invaders. Yeah, they were murderers, thieves, bugglers. But they came to invade that peaceful country of Canaan. Okay? Yeah. Did anybody think of this, that episode this way? Hmm, I haven't heard this kind of point of view. So it is, even to me, it's very first time to look at it that way. Okay. Okay. But I, I'm not anti-Semitic, no, I'm not. I have many friends who are Jewish. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, interpersonal level, so that's macro level, micro level, interpersonal level. Yeah, somebody's very happy, somebody's very unhappy, okay? So if this person is a consumer of happiness, yeah, then pick on this person, annoy this person, bother this person to steal some of the happiness to him, himself or herself. It's kind of like Buddhism sometimes. Okay? If this person has strong spear, to poke on the insulator, happiness insulator, okay, and then start picking on this person, make fun of him, or or maybe this person is like mosquito, or like some leftist journalists poking fun of President Trump, <laughs> or me poking fun of President Trump, okay, but I'm not famous person, but like New York Times, Washington Post, they write articles about making poking fun of, or CNN. Journalists, news anchors, poking fun of President Trump, and he get broadcast, and President Trump 
learn about that because it's on television. Like he watched a lot of television from what I heard. Okay. Ah! It's kind of mosquitoes penetrating the skin of President Trump and sucking up just a little bit of blood, annoyance, and making it itchy, making it itchy, okay? So, President Trump, he get annoyed by media a lot, right? <laughs> hmm? So, it's that, okay? So, they poke fun of, yeah, editorial cartoonists too, and I love them, okay? It has been fantastic job making fun of President Trump. I'm a huge fan, okay? So, yeah, just find some weakness, like his hair, or his body type, or his personality defect, his insecurity, or him, President Trump, like, being kind of like a hooligan, kind of like womanizer, okay? There's some weakness, okay? They exploit that thin layer somewhere in this shield, the thinnest layer, his weakness, yeah, they put hole in there and suck out some of his happiness and make fun of him. That's my interpersonal level. Right? Yeah. yeah, this copium allergy, okay, we call it uh, copium shield spear theory. Right? We, we gotta give it some name, right? There are a lot in copium allergy, okay, so yeah, it's kind of brand new to us. Even to me, okay. Yeah, this lady de development in human allergy. Okay, so. We were kind of thinking about it, we struggled it. I mean, I, I did a couple of days ago, and we didn't stop there. We continued to think about it, and we got it. Okay, because back in the days, uh, James Watson and Crick, Watson and Crick, the DNA. I have a friend who met one of them. Okay, Watson and Crick, DNA, okay. I met a, I have a friend who actually met them. I never met Watson and Crick, okay. But one of my friends, some of my friends actually met them. One of them, okay, so, yeah. Watson and Crick, DNA. They said, yeah, there's some other scientists who wanted to find out this three-dimensional structure of DNA. Uh, but, they stopped thinking about it. So Watson and Crick said, if they didn't stop thinking about it, probably they would have gotten the same result like we did. But unlike them, we never stopped thinking about it. We persevered. We stuck to it. We stuck to our gun. We never gave up. And yeah, we got it. Double helix structure. Beautiful structure of DNA. Okay. Yeah, X, this X-rays, crystallography, like Fourier transform, transformation, all that stuff. Okay, very technical. Okay, way beyond me. Okay, this X-ray crystallographer, and crystallography, and this Fourier transform, all that stuff. That's beyond me. Okay, we'll take five minutes break. Okay, so yeah, we did. We didn't stop thinking about it, and we got it. Great. We'll take five minutes break.
Well, let's take a break from all this, okay? Uh, well, we put it behind us for now. So I have many friends who are PhDs, who are professors. Some of them I went to school with. Okay. Yeah. I dropped out of PhD, okay? It was like special forces. I couldn't take it, okay? I, I mean, I have friends. Who are special forces, okay? Yeah. I couldn't make it, okay? Just like PhD, okay? I eat too much, okay? So. I'm in law school. That's more like master level. Yeah, it's Jewish doctor, doctor of jurisprudence, right? So it's, you, I can get a job as a, in theory, I can get a job as a law school professor. Why? Because I have JD. Jewish doctor, because yeah, in jurisprudence law school they 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 have something like PhD level, but it's not required that to become a law school professor you have law school PhD. JD is enough. So most law school professors they have JD just like I do. Okay. Uh. So, but I have many friends in academia who have PhDs and who are professors, some of them I went to school with, and some of them were my former professors or former instructors, okay? <sighs> Look, even some of my siblings have PhD and my dad, he's a professor, okay? So, yeah, we have professor friends, PhD friends. They're great, I think they're doing great jobs and the, they're kind of like librarians, okay? So they keep up knowledge, maintain of knowledge, right? They learn from the past and then they teach to the future generation, bridging the gap between past generation and future generation, okay? And that's what professors do, academics, scholars, okay? And they also create their own theories too, right? Yeah. yeah I appreciate what they do. Okay? Education, very important. Oh. But I don't know about you, okay? But uh, I mean, here is this place for intellectual entertainment. If I'm boring, I'm sorry. I apologize, okay? But I, because I do this as a hobby, right? So it's not very committed project here. We just laid back. We just do whatever. Sometimes we, mostly we just talk about mundane things like. What happened? What did I eat earlier this morning? What am I gonna eat after the episode? What's in the menu? <laughs> What's in my fridge? Uh, what am I drinking now? Oh, is it the crowberry vodka? Yes. And it's good. It's Alaska crowberry. High antioxidant and minerals and vitamins. We are like that here, okay? We are very laid back, right? But we have a very unique role, though, in society, right? Secular scholar, private, academic, kind of uh, independent, kind of like, you know. I did this term, autodidact. Uh, or polymath, polyglot, right? Yeah, come set studying kind of people. Like, give me a second, let me grab my cell phone. Let me take a picture of this before I forget.
All right. <sighs> so our unit role in society, or perhaps perhaps in history, I mean, if this remain in history, get remembered in history, I, that I cannot tell you. I'm not a future fortune teller. I don't. I cannot see the future. All right. So we are like independent scholars. We have academic freedom here, absolute academic freedom, right? Because we have jobs, we just do this as a hobby. We don't have to follow the mainstream, right? Write some grant application, you know, grant writing. We don't have to do that. We just do it in our spare time. So total academic freedom. Right? And because I don't have any family, because I'm not married, I don't have a girlfriend, yet all the time there is after 40 hours a week <laughs> work, yeah, time is ours, so we have a very unique role here, very unique function. We believe there are things that only we can do and nobody else can, okay, so. And we are discovering a lot of good stuff, although we are not being recognized yet. But that's fine. I mean, it's not that important. We're just having fun, right? Yeah. So, so we are welcome to be part of this humanological revolution, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, we are working together. But please feel free to come and go. Why? Because um, this is for the future generation. I mean, if you belong to my generation, our generation, I'm, right now it's the year two, 2020, December. Couple of la days later, it will be 2021. Okay, it's like beginning of this New Year's Eve holiday. Yeah. Mm hmm. Good, good. Yeah, let's snap out of that. Let me put that. Let me flip it. Flip the ball so that I don't have to look at it. Okay, we did enough humanology today, so. Let's talk about something else. <sighs> so, movie The Quest, it was. Yeah, Jean Claude Van Damme, I think he did a fantastic job directing this movie. Alright, yeah, because the story was good. Like, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, okay. <laughs> so, kind of his boss got into trouble. His boss, yeah, Mr. Roger Moore, tried to steal this golden dragon. That's the trophy for the this fighting championship, right? And his boss, Mr. Rajamo, tried to steal it. He got arrested. He's in jail now, right? In some Asian countries, Asian Asiatic country. I don't know what country. Okay, but is it Thai bad? I don't know the movie. So, Mr. Jean Claude Van Damme, he said, "Yeah, you know what? If I win this championship." this martial arts championship you can keep the golden dragon to yourself you don't have to give it to me but just release my boss forgive him all right isn't it cool story friendship being more valuable than money golden dragon good story very simple but humanistic right a person's friendship is more important than money. Yeah, kind of Victorian era moral morality theater, right? Yeah, something I learned in that Mary Sue Wisconsin uh, history of drama, I think class. 
it was not screenwriting class. It's, I think it's more like history of drama class. Okay, so I think we have some writing project, but it was not screenplay class. Well, history of drama, Western drama, I think. I think that's what that class was. For. It was good class. Okay, so yeah. We take five minutes break, okay? And then I tell you some interesting story. We are taking some drama, just entertainment business related classes in medicine Wisconsin. Okay? Let's take five minutes, okay? Yeah, I tell you some interesting stories there. Medicine Wisconsin. Back in like 2001, something like that, okay? So, okay. So, uh, before we get into Madison, Wisconsin days, when I was studying some entertainment business there, before we get into that, yeah, some Jankrod Van Damme movie story, okay, so there's this Mr. Kissy, a QISI, that's the guy who came to America from Europe with Jankrod Van Damme, okay, the two friends, okay, Mr. Kissy, Mr. And um, Mr. Kissy, he's like a Middle Eastern European, okay, so and he played opposing role in many of Mr. Van Damme's movie, okay, kind of villain, villainous, okay, great martial artist, okay, so so in Van Damme's movie, yeah, some martial artists like kind of look down, okay, some martial artists look up, okay, yeah, that's staring of martial artists, right? Very cool. <laughs> if your opponent is taller, the taller opponent look down. But smaller op opponent look up. Like, very challenging, right? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's that staring, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Acting is fun, yeah. Yeah, life imitates art, art imitates life, right? Yeah. Acting can be very, very therapeutic. Okay, so, yeah.
Some people have very good expressive facial or gesture, very expressive. Okay, it's kind of like live acting, right? Acting in life. It's like performance. It's beautiful. Huh? And President Trump nowadays, he does this, right? What's this? Why does he do this? <laughs> He's not trained as an actor. I'm sure he some made some guest appearances in some movies. Do I know any? I don't. But yeah, he was more reality TV star, right? Yeah, he's cool. I like him. Very entertaining. Yeah. So, yeah, showmanship is, is good asset, right? Yeah. Anyways. Men's Wisconsin. Okay. So I took this backstage craft class. It was like two credit. I got a B. Or was it A, B? I think I got a B, okay? And because backstage craft, yeah, I did fine, okay? My job was boombox operator. I, no, yeah, soundboard operator, okay? Volume and switching the channel, right? Yeah, it was fun, okay? And it was live theatrical production, a play. Okay, and I love that play. The director of that play production in campus, Madison, Wisconsin, campus. It was actual play. Kind of like community theater. Right? The theater belonged to the films, I mean, drama school, department, I don't know, it's kind of communication art. Was it department of drama and theater? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I took acting class there video production, backstage craft, and the history of drama, right? Yeah, four classes. And, um, backstage craft, okay. Yeah, we learned all the lighting, electrical wire that goes into the backstage of this theatrical play. And we are part of this actual theatrical production or play. All right. So yeah, we did interacted with actors somewhat. Actually, I did audition for that play, but they didn't select me. Okay. <clears throat> but it was a very good play, and the director of that play was a professor in that department. Department of I don't know what the name is, like drama and theater. I don't know. Okay. Well, if she was a professor there and uh, she was the director of this actual play and there was actual audience yeah the towners in madison wisconsin okay yeah some ticket box office okay in campus madison wisconsin because university of madison wisconsin madison is kind of an open campus okay there's no fence it's kind of unique maybe not so unique i don't know but very different from other schools. Well, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, that's kind of like that too. Okay, so I guess some campuses, some school campuses in America are like that, but not in Korea though. In Korea, university campuses that I've been to, it has fixed boundary, a fence line. Okay, but some schools like University of Wisconsin Medicine or University of Michigan Ann Arbor, the campus school buildings are integrated to the city of Ann Arbor, city of Madison. So there are some <laughs> shops like Walgreens or restaurants, bubble shops, and then school buildings right next to it. So some school campus does not have this defined boundary fence line it's just here and there are school buildings and there are some shops, some tobacco shops, liquor store, <laughs> restaurants. Some schools in America are like that. They integrate to this town as of having some fixed boundary, this private property. Some schools are like that, okay? They're just mixed here and there, integrated to a city. Wisconsin and Madison and Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay, so schools, universities. Okay, good schools. 
Yeah. So the school theater was in, in the Madison, Wisconsin city, right? Yeah. Open college campus. When my parents, siblings, and me first came to Madison, Wisconsin, we were like, where's the campus? We asked them, okay. And because it's like there's this Walgreens and there's just restaurants and school buildings. So where's the campus? And they said, yeah, this is a campus. Okay, this is something you very different from South Korea, Seoul, South Korea, where universities have well-defined boundaries and fence line. There's something different. So, in this theater, school theater, Madison, Wisconsin, okay, university. Yeah, civilians and some students, box office, they came watch this play. And I was as a part of the backstage craft class to credits, undergrad. Yeah, I was just soundboard operator, okay. That was my job. But we did our, our, learn a lot of other things, like sound, microphone, lighting, on top of this theater, lighting and angle, cell phone, color, color cell phone, and hey, why are these electric cords, right? Yeah, we learned all that. It was, it was very interesting class. But that play was actual play, theatrical production. Okay, I was part of that as a class student, backstage craft. Okay? And I loved that play. And the director of that play was a professor, female. Eyeglasses, <laughs> overweight. Okay, so Caucasian brunette lady. Probably in her early 50s or late 40s. Okay, female. Caucasian, brunette. Was, was her eye color? I think he was brown. Okay. But, yeah, she and I, we had some chats before. Okay. I think she was a smoker too. Okay. Yeah, some cigarette break. I think she was a smoker. Okay. So, yeah, we did chat. I, mean, I wasn't hitting on her or anything. She was not my type, okay. Most likely she's, she was married, okay. So yeah, I was not hitting on her or anything, okay. But she did a fantastic job. She's a professor, also director of this play. She did an amazing job. I mean, I did audition for the play, but she didn't select me. But she did a fantastic job, okay. What was the play about? I tell you. After five minutes, okay. And the cast, they mostly they were mostly like graduate students in that department. Yeah, the department of drama and theater or something like that, okay. Yeah, they they are so, like graduate mostly graduate students in that department, okay. We went to the same audition, but yeah, they, I guess of course, they have to cast them, okay? They're, their own graduate students, okay? But there are some other students, other people who got cast, passed the audition, okay? Some of them, undergrads, undergraduate students, okay? I did chat with them too, okay? Because I was also undergrad. Okay? It was a good casting, okay? So. Although I was not chosen, but great theatrical production. I, it was good. So, we'll take five minutes and I'll tell you about that story. That play. Yeah. It was good.
So, uh, <clears throat> I great actors really. It's Midwest. It was. It was not like New York, New York, or Los Angeles, California. It was Madison, Wisconsin. But great acting talents there. <sighs> great actors. Mostly graduate students. Okay. In that drama de department, okay. Great actors, fantastic actors. So, it's theatrical play production. So I will watch that again and again and again, and I will I was not get fed up, okay. For free, <laughs> I was watching that in the sound soundboard apparatus, okay. So we were up there, just looking down the stage, okay, behind the wall, with a window, okay. Yeah, I watched that theatrical production maybe like five times. I was not fed up, okay? So, it's a real theatrical production, so every time it's different, right? Yeah. Great actors, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. What was that play about? It was a kind of romantic comedy. Okay, yeah. Romantic comedy. It was hilarious. And actors, the cast, fantastic actors. Good screenplay, too. Romantic comedy. What was it about? Well, there's this guy. The actor, kind of slightly obese, right? Good actor. Very good actor. Okay, so he was like mute. So he, something wrong with his tongue. So he has this device. He put, that he put it in his mouth, then he can speak. One day he lost it, okay? <laughs> Maybe he sneezed, alright, but he lost it, okay, so... And some romantic comedy, okay, so... It was funny. What was that story about? I guess some romance, right? The main plot, I don't quite remember. It could have been something about cheating, adultery, I'm not sure. What I remember is that uh, it wasn't good. Yeah, because I just don't recall. It's like 20 years ago, all right? And back then, my English was poor too, okay? So I don't really exactly remember what the plot summary was, but it was, I remember it was about romance and comedy, romantic comedy. And it was hilarious. And, um, Very handsome and beautiful actors, actresses. And later on, I... Or well, before that class, Backstage Craft, I took video production class. Yeah, video camera, right? Kind of digital. Yeah, it's movie making. Video production class. Yeah, it could be TV show or movie, okay? So one of... It was like three or four credit class. Maybe five, alright? Video production class. So one of our assignment project was to make a short film, short movie with video, digital video, okay? Yeah, short movie, short film. It was not film, film, but it's digital video, okay? So... So, I needed to hire some actors or actresses, okay? Some of them, yeah, my classmates in video production class, okay? Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to hire some outsiders, okay? So I post, posted in the, this different classroom corridor, hallway, 
this chalkboard. Yeah. Actresses wanted. Okay. Yeah, I'm a student filmmaker, video production class, so um I cannot pay you when student filmmaker as part of this video production class. Yeah, I, I need like I need to cast like something one actress. Right, so yeah, I did hold some audition. We would just meet in a public place like cafe. Again, and go along the line, some improvisation, okay. And um yeah, some of the film web acting majors, right? Yeah. Well I was casting female, right? Yeah. Because male actors in my short film, well what was the title of that film? What was it about? Yeah, Water Girl Wants. Okay. Yeah, Christina Aguilera song in the background music in the beginning of the movie. Because it's like, it's student film, so no copyright violation, there's an exception in copyright law, okay, it's for education of purpose, you're, you're allowed to do that, it's, it's not commercial, okay. So I did use Miss, Miss Christina Aguilera's song, What About Wants, okay. What's that about? Yeah, it's about this guy who have no idea what a girl wants, so he get no dates, so he gets some um, interviews. Sometimes street interviews. Yeah, some people in, on the street. Okay. I think we'll take five minutes break and I'll tell you about the short film. We have digital video, but short film, short movie, okay. So, like seven, ten minutes long, okay. It was a part of the school project, video production project, okay. So, class project. I tell you about it, okay? All right, casting audition. I tell you all about it, okay? So Madison, Wisconsin, back in like two thousand one, something like that, like twenty years ago. All right, we'll take five minutes break. Okay? I tell you all about it. It's very interesting story. <coughs> I think. Huh? We'll see, okay?
Okay. Uh. So, this video class on class, like, uh, uh, I'm just making sure my zipper is closed. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm drunk. Whatever. So this video project class, this project, you have options, okay? Instructors gave us option. You can it can be individual project or you can pair up two people. I went solo. Because I'm kind of solo. I'm not a handsome hand solo in Star Wars movie, but I like it solo, okay, so yeah. So I mean I have my classmates in video production class, so some of my classmates featured in as a guest star, featured in my short film. And I also guest starred in their films too, okay. So <laughs> we have to each other, okay. So but yeah, mostly it's by myself. Yeah, in Madison, Wisconsin, State Street. Beautiful street, okay. Good restaurants, bars, clubs, okay. Yeah. So there was the principal location, okay. So filming location, which is video camera, microphone, okay. I didn't use any lighting equipment. Why? <sighs> it's just too much, okay. It's microphone, okay. Tripod. Camera and me, that's enough, alright? So no lighting equipment I used. I just filmed in the, during the daytime. <laughs> okay. Lighting equipment, yeah, I, I don't have time for it, okay? So... We just filming during the day, okay? No problem. So yeah, sometimes I would just interview on a bench along the state street, beautiful street, Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. From, yeah, this memorial mall, this li memorial library, right? That's at the bottom of the hill. On the other way, like, there's this big school campus hill, sand and this grassy hill and big school building there. And then go down, right? At the bottom, basin, this memorial library and mall. Library mall, okay, so some street vendors, yeah, Thai food, whatever food, okay, and then you go up the other way, okay, At, on top of the hill, the other way, the state street, capital, yeah, state legislature, capital of Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, okay, this beautiful town, okay, <sighs> Madison, Wisconsin, a beautiful town, okay. So. I lived there for seven years, okay, so, wonderful town. A lot of fond memories. Yeah, so, my acting instructor, our acting instructor would take us to bead, B-E-A-D, shop. Okay, so we may, would make bracelets, necklaces, very unique, our own design, beads, beads and string and beads, right? Yeah. Wonderful stores there, okay. Some these this, uh, music stores, they sell these music CDs, cassette tapes sometimes, okay. That was back in 2001, okay. Something, somewhere like that, okay. So, yeah, say all in State Street, okay. Yeah, I'll go to some dance clubs, bars there sometimes, restaurants, fantastic. Some fond memories there. So yeah, what a girl wants, yeah, I would, interview some random strangers on the street, okay. There was this gentleman, probably in his 60s, okay. I was like, I was interviewing on camera. It was, it's kind of reality TV, a little bit, okay. So it was, it was real interview with real people. Some other parts, some actresses, okay. Scripted, all right. Yeah, of course I wrote the script. It's, I was like, writer, director, actor, okay. Yeah, triple treat, right? Yeah. Some parts of that was scripted, some parts actual real interview, right? Right. I don't have that footage 
that production final food is with me, but maybe management Wisconsin campus somewhere in their archive and vote, maybe it's this to have it. We are required to submit to the, the vault archive, okay. Department of Drama, Communication or something like that. They may still have it, okay. After today case, maybe they didn't keep it, I don't know, okay, but I don't have it with me. So, yeah, it's about, yeah, this clueless single guy, nothing very successful in dating scene, in romance market, because I have no idea what a woman wants, what a girl wants, so that was the theme, okay? So I would interview real person, it's not scripted. This gentleman that I met on the street, State Street, yeah, so I was like, interviewer, he's an interviewee, on camera, okay? Yeah, I was like, Hey, mister, what a girl wants! And he would tell me, Yeah, hey, ladies, they don't want to be objectified. They don't want to be tra treated as a commodity, okay? They want to be treated as a person, human being, okay? Yeah, respect. That's what he said. Okay, mister, thank you for the lesson, your wisdom. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, there was one scene, okay. Some other parts. Yeah, I did audition, okay, because a couple of actresses, yeah, they're like acting major, undergrad level, or even acting major in graduate level, okay. Yeah, I did some audition, kind of interview, okay, yeah. And one of them, yeah, got cast and was part of this movie, short film, okay. What was the scene? It was scripted, it was not improvisation, it was scripted, okay, so. I was walking down the street and a lady walking down the street and I asked her, Hey, uh, what does a girl want? And it's scripted, okay? And yeah, I wrote a script, screenplay, okay? So, yeah, so she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, 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 yeah. And then, um, okay, would you damn me? And she slapped my face, okay? So that, that was the thing, okay? It's scripted, okay? And that lady, I didn't know, but she was in that theatrical production where I was soundboard operator. I didn't know at the time, okay. Later on, I learned, okay. So I was like, I emailed her, okay. Oh, sorry, I did not recognize you, but hey, I, I was sound operator in this wonderful theatrical play. I was taking backstage craft class and I was sound operator and uh, I saw you acting. I'm I'm a huge fan. You wonderful actor, actress. Yeah. Some appreciation, okay. If you, but at then when I was taking this video production class, I didn't know. Yeah, some actors, actresses, they're very humble, right? <laughs> Later on I realized I've seen that before in theatrical play or movie. But they didn't brag about it. <laughs> yes. Some actors, actresses are very humble. Humility, okay. Later on, I realized, oh yeah, I've seen that before in this theatrical production, a play or a movie, right? God bless them. Yeah. Actors, actresses, they yeah, have well, money, power, fame, okay? Many of them have virtues, like humility, okay? Very humble people, okay? They're artists. Acting, performance, yeah, performance, artists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really good, okay? Yeah. Yeah, they might not be these Hollywood TV star, movie stars, okay? But they love what they do. Acting, performance, great art, right? 
I really appreciate what they do, actors, actresses. Okay. Even in Alaska, yeah, there's some local theaters. Yeah, I've been to one. Okay, yeah, to show my appreciation. Oh, that great. Right? Yeah. Hmm? There's some Alaskan production filmmakers. Yeah, I've seen that movie. Okay, some of them. Okay, they're great. Okay, yeah. So you may not be in Manhattan, New York, or Los Angeles, California. You could be anywhere in the world, right? I, I I recognize them, appreciate them, filmmakers, actors, actresses, okay, models, right? They're great. Yeah, I appreciate them. Even though they are not in Manhattan, New York, or Los Angeles, California, but they love what they do, acting, filmmaking, writing, right? I really appreciate them, okay, so. I us, right? We are mathematicians, philosophers, like highway philosophers, right? Yeah, in the highway, okay, it's just traffic jam. We think about philosophy, highway philosopher, okay. Or we are humanologists or math, runaway mathematicians or private academics, okay. Yeah, we are not in Harvard, Yale, MIT, but we do our job, right? Yeah. We don't quite get appreciated, but we enjoy what we do. We are happy and healthy. And we are not breaking any law, moral codes. Everything we do is legitimate, legal, moral. Yeah, and we are happy. And we are making some good products and put it out there, right? Yeah, cheers to us. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay, that's it for today, okay? Yeah, we'll continue tomorrow, right? Yeah, maybe with some more human energy. Right? All right, thank you. Happy New Year, a couple of days later, okay? Thank you, bye.